and this is chapter 10. Uh, so now what we want to do in the SQL is we want to kind of extend our notation of a function. So uh, for instance, if you look at something If you look, if you look at a curve, which, for instance, is like this here, okay. Now, uh, of course, we are not able to uh, express such a such a curve uh, in our usual way. So, we, uh, if we only accept functions uh, uh, which uh, uh, are expressed by y is equal to, and then you have some expression in x, uh, you will not be able to describe uh, such a curve here. Now. Uh, one way to uh, also if you if you write a function like this here you are not able to do this okay because a function has uh, one of the basic properties of a function is that for in this case for every x uh, you only have uh, uh, one y exactly one y value but here you see that uh, for instance for this x value you have more y values so you cannot uh, you cannot find the expression you cannot express this curve uh, by by such a relation and uh, you, you cannot express such a curve for such a relation either because for certain y values, uh, you have more than one x value. Now, uh, what we want to do is, okay, we want to we uh, extend our notation of uh, functions. Uh, and the easy way to do this is uh, uh, you use a parameter. So you assume that, uh, for instance, you can think about this is the uh, pass of a of a particle which is moving, and uh, so, so you, you also have an, uh, a new variable which is the time, which describes you at which at which time point the particle is where is at which location. Uh, and uh, if we use such a way, so you you, you will naturally use uh, uh, two equations: uh, uh, x is equal to f of t and y is equal to g of t, in order to describe something like this here. Uh, and uh, such equations are called parametric equations. And T is called a parameter. So what is new now that uh, the, uh, uh, if you do something like this, if you use such a uh, set of parametric equations in order to describe a curve, uh, what you have is also a direction because uh, normally t, if you t, if you consider t as a time, uh, as t is getting larger, uh, the particle is moving in a certain direction. So, so what you have here normally as well is a, a direction. So, so for instance, if t is getting larger, the curve uh, is traversed like this here. Now. Uh, what we essentially want to do in the chapter in chapter 10 is uh, to extend what we have done so far uh, to to curves which are given by parametric equations. Uh, so we want to, uh, uh, for instance, we want to look at questions like, okay, if you have given a curve and parametric equation, okay, how to find the uh, area in case it makes sense. So, for instance, for this curve, it, uh, uh, one notation which makes obviously sense is the arc length. So we want to find the uh, formula for the arc lengths. Now, of course, what you could do always is, okay, you try to eliminate the parameter. Then you get the usual function, and uh, then you use uh, uh, the formulas we have developed so far. So then you just use the arc lengths formula for the for the original function. But uh, the main thing about this is you you might not be able either you might not be able to uh, eliminate uh, t, or uh, uh, you can eliminate t, but the resulting expression would be very complicated, whereas this expression here is very easy. So what we want to have is we want to, uh, for instance, uh, have a formula finding the arc lengths of this curve here, which uh, involves already uh, those two functions here. And not, uh, uh, of course, uh, 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 you could first solve, you could sort of eliminate t, then you get some, something, some expression like this, and you could, could use our original uh, formula. Okay, so these are so-called parametric equations. So, uh, uh, easy example. And y is equal to 1 minus t. Of course, for such a, uh, if you consider such a curve here, uh, 
the t must be of larger equal than zero, otherwise the x doesn't make sense. Uh, and now what you can do, what, what you can do is, you co for certain values of t, you compute uh, x and y. So for instance, t is equal to zero. You see that uh, x must be equal to zero, so we are here, and y must be equal to one, so we are here. Or so this is the t is equal to zero. You can say this is starting point. Uh, uh, then you have, for instance, t is equal to 1, where x is equal to 1, and uh, y is equal to 0, and so on. But uh, indeed, this is, this is a, a set of parametric equations where you easily can eliminate the parameter. So you see that x squared is equal to t, and you plug this in into the second. Uh, and you see that uh, because you have also that x must be larger or equal than 0 because of this assumption here. So you see that uh, uh, in this situation, The curve given by the parametric equation is given like this here and has this direction here as t increases. Uh, uh, now, I should maybe stress that this is, uh, such a curve is called parametric curve. Okay, so a parametric curve is a curve which is given by a set of parametric equations. Uh, you also see that uh, if the uh, range for the parameter is restricted, uh, you will just get some part of the curve here. So for instance, if t is just from A to B, uh, you might only get some, some part of the curve. Uh, and you will naturally call here, for instance, t is equal to 0 will be called the initial point. And uh, uh, if uh, t is between 0 and 1, then t is equal to 1. So you just get this part here, and this will be the initial point. This will be, be, will be called end point. So this is just notation language. Uh, now. Uh, Maybe this notation is more subtle than it looks like. Uh, just look at this example, another easy example for a For a curve which is given by a set of parametric equations, where we here restrict the parameters, so we say theta is between 0 and uh, 2 pi, could be given like this here. So, uh, of course, we know that uh, x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. So, what we, have, uh, what we have here is a circle with radius 2. Okay, so here maybe there's one. And we see that the initial point is here. And we are moving around the circle, what in, what in mathematics we normally call the positive direction, which is counterclockwise. So we move around like this here. Uh, uh, you have to know this. OK, so what you see here is the parametric curve. Uh, of course, if you change this. Uh, So if the theta is not between 0 and 2 pi, but between 0 and, for instance, 4 pi, then you go twice around the circle. Okay, so the parametric curve would be you go twice around the circle. It's different from the curve. The curve you see is the circle. Okay, here in this case, those two parametric curves are different. Okay, but if you just, if you just look at the curve here, uh, without knowing that here you go around twice, okay, it looks like it's the same, okay. So there's a difference between parametric curve and curve. Okay, so the parametric curve for us uh, is, is, in this situation, is the whole, it's the whole curve going twice around the circle. It's more information than you just might see here. Okay, so, so th uh, those are all easy examples. Maybe it, uh, a little bit more challenging. Theta is between zero. And two pi. Okay, so you uh, you see that uh, maybe one easy way to plot this is uh, okay. So first you plot uh, what is x doing with respect to the parameter. So here you have x, here you have theta. So this is the cosine. So we start here. 
So we start here. Go something like this. And if you look at the sign, then uh, uh, what is the sign doing? So th for the sign, you have uh, over the same parameter range, uh, the sign is, you have two periods of the sign. So, uh, but if you plot this now in one coordinate system as a parametric curve, uh, you see that, uh, okay, so we start uh, at x is equal to 1. So we start here. Now, uh, as uh, theta is moving from uh, 0 to pi half, uh, so which means uh, uh, the, the, you see that the, the x is going from 1 to 0, so the x is going in this direction. But uh, uh, if you look at the y coordinate, okay, so the y coordinate is first getting... So first is uh, equal to zero, so first we are here, then the y-coordinate is getting larger, but at pi half you are also back to zero. So you move in this direction here. Now, uh, as, uh, as theta is going from uh, uh, pi half to pi, we will go here with x from zero to minus one, and you see that uh, uh, Actually, here, the, the y coordinate is doing the same, but in the negative direction. So what we get is this here. And then this closes like this here. So it, it, you see, for this, in, in those easy cases, and this is the direction. So for this easy case, it's, uh, it's quite easy. It's, 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 it's not hard to figure out how the parametric curve looks like here. Now, uh, Uh, how about this example here? So you have uh, theta times cosine of theta, and y is equal to theta times sine of theta. Theta again from 0 to 2 pi. You see, you see already here that you can, the theta you can interpret as an angle, because uh, x squared plus y squared is equal to theta squared. Uh, so normally, if you, look at, if you look at something like this here, kind of tells you, because it's a circle, so the theta here is the, is the angle which you see here. So if you... So this is the theta, and uh, uh, what you see here in front is, is can be interpreted as the radius. So here you see that... Uh, Okay, as you move from zero, if, as your angle is moving from zero to two pi, uh, your uh, radius is getting, is getting larger and larger. Okay, so you start, your radius is also starting with zero and then at the end is two pi here. So from this it's quite easy to figure out how this uh, curve here looks like. Okay, so we move, you can think about the theta here as you can, it's, so this theta you can interpret as an angle. We move, we move something like this here, and as we move, the radius is getting larger and larger. So what we have here is something like this here. Okay, now and uh, now you could play a little bit around, but you see that quite uh, if you use a little bit more complicated parametric equations, it's already not so easy to figure out how the curve looks like. Yeah. So for instance. So for instance, if you have 1 minus uh, sine 2 theta, cosine theta, and you have uh, 1 minus sine 2 theta, sine of theta. Okay, also in this case, it would be possible because uh, you can interpret uh, once more the theta. So you are moving here, and this what you see here is the radius. So you just have to figure out what is the radius doing. But we will see in a moment that using maple, if, if the... Uh, parametric equations are getting even more complicated. Of course, it's hard to figure out uh, how the parametric curve looks like. Uh, but we will see that uh, Maple can plot such curves uh, without problems, uh, and uh, uh, this will make it much more easier. We will look at some more sophisticated uh, curves when we, uh, when I show you how to do this by using Maple. I just want to say that, uh, of course, uh, if you have a, uh, if you have a 
an ordinary function, you can also inter interpret such an ordinary function as a parametric curve. You just say, OK, our parameter x is equal to t, and y is then equal to f of t. This is not the only way to do it. Another way would be, OK, you say y is equal to t, and uh, x is equal to f of t. OK, Th this kind of is, is, is the same, OK? But you just inter interchange the role of x and y, which means uh, uh, one gives the uh, uh, original function, one gives the inverse. OK, uh, but you see already in our if you, if you look at the section in our textbook, you see there are some nice examples. And actually, you can here uh, construct quite a lot of nice curves, uh, which look rather complicated. Uh, so in our textbook, you see this example. Y is equal to t plus 2 cosine of 5t, where t is between. OK, it, it would be a little bit complicated to figure out how this curve looks like here, but, uh, without having access to a uh, plotting device. This maybe would be even more complicated. So you see those two parametric curves you see plotted in our textbook. Uh, uh, we can use Maple to check whether the author has got it right. OK, so now this is a good, uh, this is a good point where I can once more emphasize the power of ma Maple, uh, where you can easily visualize such functions. So maybe let's first uh, uh, check uh, this easy example. This is not what I want to do, so uh, wait a moment. OK, so I have, I have to look myself into the help. Because uh, the, actually, this is Maple 8. Now the newest version, Maple 11. Maple 11, everything is different. So we have to, so uh, if, you, if, you, if you have a, uh, if you have a question to Maple, you can use the help, which is quite good. And here in help, you have an item which is called uh, topic search. So for topic search, if you, if you want to understand how to use a comment, okay, so you use topic search, and then uh, you uh, search for the comment you want to find. Now this is, so you get here all kinds of information. Normally, the best thing is to look, the best thing is just to look at the examples, uh, because then you most of the time can rather quickly figure out how to use it. So here you see already an example for a parametric curve. Normally you have to group them together. So you write sine of t, cosine of t, and write also the range of t inside the bracket. And uh, uh, using this kind of format, Maple will immediately uh, accept this as a, as a parametric as a set of parametric equations. Uh, so the mistake I made, I wrote this outside. For, for pi, uh, if you want to use pi, you have to write it. You have to write the first, the first letter in capital. So uh, otherwise, it's not recognized as, as pi. OK, now it's correct. So OK, this is indeed the circle. You, you do not get the direction here. So uh, uh, what, we, uh, what we saw as well as this one, so here you have uh, Cosine of t and sine of 2t, we just figured out how this curve looks like. Yeah. Now, uh, more, more, in more interesting examples are those examples here. So uh, you find already the corresponding plot in our textbook, but let's, uh, let's verify it. So t plus 2 times sine of t and t plus <coughs> and from minus 2 pi. OK, so you see, uh, you see this kind of curve. Maybe uh, let's plot it over a larger, maybe from minus 4 to 4 is better. 
So it's, uh, you see this kind of curve is kind of periodic, but it would be rather hard to figure out how this curve, look, uh, how this curve look, looks like without having access to a graphing device. Uh, Another interest, interesting one is the other one. Two two pi. Okay, so here this would be very complicated. Okay, to figure it out without having access to a graphing device. You see some other some other uh, k kind of interesting functions are also given by, uh, like you choose uh, uh, a, co a cosine and a sine, but you choose here. Uh, different you choose different numbers in the argument so different multiples of t like this one uh, I should plot it over a larger okay so this one All right. uh, maybe let's choose much larger one so let's okay something like this here so uh, uh, he, here I just use cosine and sine, but I use uh, different multiples of t in the uh, argument. You normally get c a kind of pictures like this here. But you see that the two numbers which I chose, 5 and 3, are both uh, uh, integers. Uh, uh, now, uh, uh, interesting case is if you choose something a little bit more exotic. So like here we choose e as the coefficient, and here we choose square root of 3. You see, it, it, uh, so for us, this is, this is now also a function, okay? So the graph is a little bit more exotic than the functions we have, uh, look, uh, we have looked at previously. So here I have x is equal to the cosine of et, and y is equal to the sine of uh, square root of 3t. And actually, uh, but this is, this is quite complicated, but it could be proved that uh, as t is getting large, what you get is the whole, the whole square. Okay, so this will eventually fill out the whole square here. So if I make uh, if I make t larger and larger, uh, uh, I will reach every point. Maybe Maple has some problems to plot this, uh, but let's maybe choose 2,000. It seems to be uh, outside. It seems to get more sparse and inside more clustered. But this uh, this is this is the fault of Maple. Maybe I. I'm not sure whether I can add here the number of points. Uh, I think the number of points which are computed are not enough. I don't know. I don't know how much, how many. I didn't try it, but uh, uh, actually, uh, so it, it, it can be proved, but this is quite deep. Uh, it can be proved that uh, uh, as t is getting larger and larger, you will fill out the whole, the whole uh, square you see here. Okay, for this situation, and it would be quite interesting to find out, okay, for which numbers do you have this property that you fill the whole square, this, the so-called square filling property. Also, this is well investigated, but this is much more complicated than what we in, try to do here in calculus. Uh, it should be mentioned that maybe you could guess the reason is because those two numbers are irrational. Okay, so whenever you choose irrational numbers, uh, you will get the whole uh, square as the parametric curve, but this is not true. So for instance, if you choose, uh, if you choose two times square root of uh, three and square root of three, which are both, uh, both irrational numbers, uh, then you get a quite different picture, this here. <laughs> so you see, you can here generate quite a lot of different functions. And what you see, essentially, this will fill out this guy here. This, uh, you, you see, the problem here is that the first one is a multiple of the second one. The first coefficient is a multiple of the second coefficient. Essentially, whenever this happens, you do not get the, ho the whole square. But you get the whole square if, you, if, if the two numbers are not related, like this here. If you cannot find the nu number A and the number B such that A times the first number plus B, plus B times the second number is, is equal to zero, where A and B are integers, it can be, can be proved, but it's very deep. This is not easy to prove, and this, this, this would lead in a completely other subject, which is number theory. But you see that the essential thing I want to tell you is that uh, uh, now uh, curves uh, uh, described by parametric equations, uh, you can quite a lot of 
you can now include quite a lot of curves in your function notation because now this is also a function for us. Uh, and we want to, for instance, find out at some certain point, okay, what is the tangent of this function here and so on. Or in some certain range for, for t is the function concave upward or concave downward and so on. And we will, indeed, we will be able to study such properties for such functions, uh, even such exotic ones. I don't like the way it's plotted, but okay, no, no, no way to plot it better. Okay, so this function is the so-called cycloid, and we will look at it in a minute because uh, this is an interesting function for us. So essentially, what you are looking at is the following. So you have the unit ball. So the radius here is equal to 1. And uh, so I assume you have this kind of pole here. You fix this point. Okay, you mark it, OK? And now you, you let the ball roll. And you are interested in the curve, which is traced out by this point here. Now the, the curve happens to be exactly this one. This is here, maybe, the, maybe I should plot uh, one period. So you see that at time zero, you are here at zero, and then the ball is rolling. Okay. So at time uh, uh, about pi, okay, you will, uh, because at time about pi, your point will be here. And then at two pi, you are at zero again. So if you, if you mark one point at the circle and let the circle roll along the x-axis, uh, the curve which is traced out by this point here is this kind of curve here. And you see that the parametric equations of this curve are given by uh, one, uh, t minus sine of t and 1 minus cosine of t. Or in general, if, uh, because here the radius is 1, if you have a general radius, then you have r times uh, t minus sine of t and r times one, 1 minus cosine of t. And of course, this is easy to derive from this picture here. Okay, so uh, this, is just, uh, this is just to let, uh, to let you know that maple indeed is possible to uh, plot uh, curves given by parametric equations. And if you want to generate some nice pictures, you can play a little bit around on your own. Then uh, your point uh, might be, for instance, here. So this is, your, this is our point. Oh, I just use the same notation as in our textbook. So uh, here the center is denoted by C. Now, uh, this is called T here. I shouldn't. Uh, let's first consider the situation where the point is here. So this, of course, is our radius of the circle. So hit, and, uh, now the radius is not necessarily uh, 1. So this is called Q here. So here the center. And we call this angle here theta. Uh, and, uh, uh, and our curve uh, is like something like this here. Something like this here. So the ball is the ball is moving, okay. And what we are interested in is in the x coordinate and the y coordinate of the curve, which is traced out like this here. Now uh, you you s easily see from this picture that uh, uh, this length here. And uh, I didn't I, I didn't draw it very well because this length here must be equal to this length here, which is not true at all in my picture. But uh, uh, you see that. Uh, uh, Bt, this is what you can easily compute. So we want to introduce this theta as our parameter. So this is uh, theta times uh, r. Uh, and this is equal to, uh, if we call this o, to this length here. And from this, we can easily compute uh, the x and the y coordinate. You see that uh, the x coordinate is given by, so you, uh, here this length here is uh, 
uh, r times the sine of theta, and you have to subtract this one, so you get the theta times r minus uh, r times uh, sine of theta. So what you get is r times uh, theta minus sine of uh, theta. And for y, you have to look at this one. So this is r times the cosine of theta. Uh, and you have to take the whole one, which is r, and subtract this. So r minus r times the cosine of theta. So what you get here is r times 1 minus the sine of theta. And theta is our parameter. So if you, if you want to have uh, one loop of the cycloid, uh, then the theta is between 0 and 2 pi. So the curve is called cycloid. Now, the reason why this is an interesting example for us uh, and why this is introduced in our textbook is that, indeed, you can uh, try to eliminate the parameter and express this as a function uh, in the form x is equal to f of y. So already this picture might suggest that you are able to do this. Uh, uh, but uh, the resulting expression is very complicated, whereas uh, uh, the parametric equations are still kind of simple. And, uh, uh, that's, another, that's one of the reasons why we want to develop all the uh, formulas we have developed so far. For instance, uh, uh, in, uh, one good question would be, okay, what is the length of one uh, loop, or, uh, which is essentially an arc length question. And if you, uh, one way to solve this is first you eliminate theta, and then you uh, plug everything in in our arc length formula. But uh, obviously, it would be more convenient to have a formula which just involves the parametric equations. Uh, and the same is true for, okay, if you're interested in what is the area below one loop and above the x-axis and so on and so forth. You also see that in our, our textbook, uh, uh, gives some historical account of this curve here. So this curve is a quite important curve also in applications. The reason, the reason for that is because this curve is the solution of two famous problems. I'm not sure how to pronounce this in English. I asked, I asked already several native speakers, but nobody could, told, could tell me. OK, so this is the prehistochrone problem and uh, tautochrone problem. Now, uh, the, the reason why this, why this uh, curve is quite important in application is because it solves those two problems. Uh, now, uh, what is the first problem? The first problem was a, a question which was posed by, I think, Fanuli. I'm not sure whether I wrote it, wrote it down. I think Panuli. No, uh, Panuli solved it. Uh, uh, maybe Euler or some famous mathematician asked the following question. OK, you have given uh, two points. The second point is below the first one. OK, now uh, what you have is you, you put a particle here, OK, and uh, for instance, you choose one curve. And uh, you let so you, you put something here and you let slide it down to B, okay? Uh, as, so the only uh, force uh, 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 which you consider is gravitational force. So you put, put an object here, you let, let it sli slide down here. Now the question is very comp is, is, it looks rather complicated because the question is okay, which curve minimizes uh, the time? So w uh, the question is to find the curve which because you have many, many different choices here. So which of the curves has the property that the time of the particle is minimized? Uh, and this problem was solved then by, by Bernoulli by showing the cyclone is the right answer. This is, this is the curve which minimizes uh, such that the time is minimized. You see, this is a kind of optimi optimization problem, but a rather complicated one, because uh, you ask for finding, for finding the, uh, uh, the curve, the right curve. Uh, and actually, it, uh, this was the starting point of a uh, uh, own theory in mathematics. Uh, so that's why this example is, impo is, is important. And, uh, another reason, uh, so already uh, uh, Huygens, uh, the famous physicist, showed already earlier that uh, uh, the cycloid is also the solution to this problem here. Now, uh, also this is very important. So. Uh, 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 normally, you have the following question. Okay, so if you have, for instance, if you think about the pendulum clock, uh, okay, so you have a you have a clock which uses a pendulum. Uh, 
Okay, so you first swing out the pendulum. You first hold it like this here, and then you let it swing. Okay, and normally what the clock should do is count the time. Okay, now uh, if you have such a pendulum clock, okay, the, uh, the the time for one swing should not depend on uh, where I put the uh, this kind of thing first. Okay, so if for instance if I start here, if I release it, okay, or if I start here and release it, the time should be the same. Okay, uh, uh, otherwise you cannot construct such a curve. Okay, so it's uh, such a clock. Now the question is, okay, uh, uh, on which curve has to sw uh, has has this kind of thing to swing? Okay, and the answer is uh, the cycloid. So again, for the cycloid, okay, if, uh, if you if you imagine the cycloid now, uh, but reversed like this here. So we just saw it the other way around. So if you if you if you look at it like this here. It, the cycloid has the property where, if, wherever you place here an object, okay, uh, the time it will take to to move like this here, or to slide, the time it will take to slide down to this position, no matter where you place it, always the same. And this is uh, this is of course important in applications, uh, and that's another reason why the uh, uh, cycloid was already considered in the 18th, 19th century, or 17th, even 17th century. Okay, and we will we will work later on with this curve as a kind of toy example because uh, uh, this is a curve where you even so you can you could theoretically you could eliminate the parameter, but the resulting expression would be very tedious, very complicated, and uh, uh, it's uh, it, it, it's certainly for this curve it's worthwhile to uh, develop a machinery which allows us to find, uh, uh, for instance, arc lengths of. Uh, uh, one loop of this curve here without going first, without first elimin eliminating the parameter. So this is our main uh, aim. You see in our textbook sometimes uh, f uh, curves uh, are also, parametric curves uh, uh, also have an additional parameter, so sometimes you have families of uh, parametric curves, but since we do not need this in the SQL, I'm not going into details. So. Uh, our aim for the SQL is, okay, given, given the parametric curve, okay, how to find, for instance, uh, tangents at certain points, uh, uh, how to find arc lengths, how to find areas below the curve, or, for instance, if you, uh, if you take the cycloid and you rotate it about the x-axis, -ax, uh, how to find the uh, surface area of the resulting surface of revolution, and so on. And we want to uh, express all our formulas uh, in terms of those two functions here. Okay, so the first, the first thing we are going to discuss is uh, uh, tangents. Okay, so you, 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 we assume that we have given a parametric curve. Okay, now sometimes under some, under some, uh, in some situations you are able to solve it. Okay, uh, if you are able to solve it, uh, if we assume we, are, we solve it, okay, then we have an expression like this here. Now we plug those two in. So uh, g of t is equal to f of uh, f of t. And what we want to find is the derivative, uh, but we, we can do this already here. So we take the derivative with respect to the parameter. What we have to do here is using the chain rule. So we have uh, the derivative of uh, uh, this function here with respect to x times the derivative of f of t. So uh, the reason why I'm not writing here prime is because uh, 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 you have to keep in mind that uh, uh, here this prime is derivative with respect to t. Here this is quite different. Here this is derivative with respect to x. And then you plug in x is equal to f of t. So it's quite different. The meaning is different. Okay. So that's fine. Uh, in, 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 in Maybe uh, classes which are more directed to uh, uh, applications, uh, it's quite, uh, or in engineering, it's quite, you quite often see the notation. If you take the derivative with respect to the time, you, they are normally, so maybe you have seen this already in other classes. Uh, this is the standard notation, so you put a point on, the, on top. This means, the, uh, this means derivative with respect to the parameter or the time, most of the time in applications. Uh, you find this also in many textbooks. Uh, this is just to make it different here, because here you take the derivative with respect to t, whereas here you take the derivative with respect to x, and then plug in this here. 
Okay, and now you see that uh, if this derivative is not equal to zero, you can divide by this derivative, and you get that the derivative uh, of d with respect to x is equal to And this is what we want to have, okay? Because this now tells you, okay, you do not have to solve, you do, you do not need this step here. We can just think about we have this step. Because you see that the derivative of the function, okay, is expressed as uh, uh, just in terms of uh, our functions from the parametric equation. Okay, so if we want to find, if we have given the parametric equation, we can forget about this here. So the only thing we do is uh, we take the derivative of g, uh, uh, we take the derivative of f, and we divide those two uh, and then what we, sh what we should get is the derivative of our uh, parametric curve at some certain point. Okay. Uh, of course, it, it, we would need to think about okay, under which, uh, for which, under which assumptions is this satisfied? Okay. Under which assumptions are you allowed to do this? Uh, but we are not going into, into, th into those details because this is, from a mathematical point of view, is more complicated. So the important thing is uh, uh, that the derivative uh, uh, of the uh, of a parametric curve is given by this formula here. And you see, if you rewrite this, everything in Leibniz notation, this here is, the, is our y, so you have dy over dx, uh, and this one is dy over dt. So if you rewrite everything in Leibniz notation, okay, you will you, you will immediately accept this, okay, because it looks like, uh, okay, so you have this fraction here, and you multiply numerator and denominator by one over d dt, and you get this one, okay, which is just a rule to memorize it. So it, in this sense, uh, the Leibniz symbol beh behaves again like a fraction, as we have seen already several times. But this is just a way to memorize it. You see that uh, uh, if uh, If dx over dt is not equal to zero, uh, but dy over dt is equal to zero, then what we get are horizontal tangents. And uh, if it is the other way around, if dy over uh, dt is not equal to zero, and dx is equal to uh, over dt is equal to zero. Then what we get are vertical tangent. If both are zero, you get nothing because uh, the reason is you are not allowed to do this if both are zero. Okay, because here, here you for this one. You see that uh, if you are able to solve it, if you are able to uh, eliminate the parameter, then we can write a derivative like this here. So this actually needs, we have to think about, okay, what are assumptions such that I can eliminate the parameter, okay? This is not so easy to uh, prove, but there are theorems which tells you under which assumptions uh, you, you can eliminate the parameter t. Uh, uh, if you can eliminate the parameter t, okay, then you can do this. Uh, but if both derivatives are equal to zero, so this one is equal to zero, and this one is equal to zero, then you cannot eliminate the parameter. You, uh, you cannot eliminate the parameter like this. Uh, okay. So this is uh, something which is not proved in the textbook. But even this here, uh, so this is uh, uh, this is not proved in the textbook because this is not really proved in the textbook. But I just tell you that. If dx over dt is not equal to zero, dy over dt is equal to zero. You see this from this expression. Then uh, you have horizontal tangents. And if it's the other way around, actually, uh, uh, in, if it's the other way around, you cannot solve here for x. You cannot, you cannot eliminate the parameter in such a way. You can eliminate the parameter, but you cannot write y as a function of x. But you can write x as a function of y. And then you can uh, just use this kind of argumentation here. So this, uh, this is for computing tangents. Now maybe I should stress that uh, if you if you want to compute the second derivative of f, okay, so you have uh, uh, you have dy over dx, and you want to compute the derivative, kind of the second derivative with respect to x, 
Okay. Then what you have to do is this is a function of t. Okay. So you have uh, d uh, dy. Uh, sorry, d d over d t, d over d t, d y over d x over d y over d t. Uh, d uh, what, y is x and d x over d t. And uh, so you, you take this curve here, and you uh, again you you once more you uh, you compute now the second partial, the second derivative with respect to uh, x. So what you have to look at is uh, d over dt of this guy here, and you have to divide it by dx over dt. Again, if you, if you, would, uh, if you would erase the dt, okay, you would get this here. Okay? So this is the, the way you can memorize it. But the thing which I want to stress is this is, not, this is not equal to the second derivative uh, of y with respect to t over the second derivative of x with respect to t. It's not necessarily true. So for the first derivative, okay, you can compute uh, uh, the derivative of the parametric curve okay, by looking at, at the function f and g and uh, finding the derivative of g over the derivative of f. Okay, this is for the first derivative. But the second derivative is not equal to the second derivative of uh, g over the second derivative of f. It's not necessarily true. Okay, so, so here you have to be careful. And, uh, uh, but of course, if you can compute the second derivative, you can use the expression in order to figure out where is the function concave upward, where is the function concave downward, and so on. Even for functions which are given by parametric equations. Okay, so maybe let's look at an example where we apply this. So maybe I leave this here that you can digest this. Uh, so it's not true that the second derivative uh, of a parametric curve is given by the second derivative of y over the second derivative of x. It's not true. So for instance, let's look once more at the, at the cycloid. And y is equal to r times 1 minus the cosine of theta. The derivative is equal to, so using the, fo the formula we just saw is r times the sine of theta over uh, r times 1 minus the cosine of theta. So what you get is sine of theta over 1 minus cosine of theta. Okay, so this is the derivative of the parametric uh, curve, okay? But uh, maybe just to stress this here, for the, for this example, the second derivative is not r times cosine of theta over uh, r times sine of theta. It's not true. It's not the second derivative, okay? So only for the first derivative you have uh, this easy rule here. Now, for instance, if you want to figure out, okay, uh, where where does the cycloid ha has, uh, let's say, horizontal tangents? Okay, so for horizontal tangents, uh, sine of theta is equal to zero. So this means theta is multiple of uh, pi, uh, but uh, one minus cosine of theta not equal to zero. Okay, because the denominator is not equal to zero. So from this you see that, okay, just the uh, odd. Uh, just the odd, uh, I should write this like this. Just the odd multiples of pi are, uh, remain. Okay, so uh, if you look at the odd multiples of pi, then uh, uh, at this point, uh, this parametric curve has a, a horizontal tangent. Of course, this is something you see from the graph. So this is x here. This is y. Now. Uh, you see that, uh, okay, the graph here is, like this here. 
you see that after after two, after two pi, uh, we are at this point here, okay? And this point is equal to the uh, circumference of the of the circle. Now you see that, uh, okay, so if theta is equal to pi, uh, so this tells you theta is equal to pi, you have a, a, a horizontal tangent, so this kind of means you, okay, the circle has uh, rolled ha ha uh, half the way, okay? So the point, if the point starts at the, the bottom, the point after, uh, uh, after the angle change from zero to pi will be at the top, okay? And at the top, of course, you will have a, a a horizontal tangent. Okay, so this also makes sense with, uh, by comparing it with the uh, uh, graph of the cycloid. Okay, but you see that at those two points, zero and two times r times pi, okay, uh, which corresponds to the parameter values uh, uh, zero and two pi, okay, uh, you have a quite different behavior. So you see that because uh, uh, after 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 this point, after the parameter reach two pi, okay, the uh, game will start new, so we'll, you get, we'll get something like this here. So uh, you see that, uh, for, for instance, uh, theta is equal to zero, uh, both here are uh, equal to zero, so you have zero over zero, okay? So th this means you cannot use this formula here. But indeed, you can use the formula if theta is larger than zero, okay? So you can still look at the, uh, okay, so if you wanna know, or if you wanna, if you wanna understand uh, whether this tangent here exists here, okay? Uh, you can look at this, this expression where theta tends to zero, for instance, from the right, uh, dy over dx. So you have the limit, uh, theta tends to zero from the right of this expression here, sine of theta over one minus cosine of theta. And for this, uh, since we stay away from zero, since we stay away from zero with, with theta, this expression is valid. It's okay to use it. Uh, and you see that here you can easily use the L'Hopital. So you will get here cosine of theta over, and here you have sine of theta, and you see that this will tend to plus infinity. But if you, if you come from the other direction, okay, because, uh, because the sine is different, you will, you will go to minus infinity. So you will see that at the point zero, there is uh, neither there is neither a vertical nor horizontal tangent. Okay, but it's something you see already here, okay, because you have this kind of cusp here. So if you come from this direction, the tension will tend, the slope of tension will tend to infinity, but uh, on this, for this point, it will be minus infinity. Okay, so uh, for the two points, uh, for the points where both, where both are zero, okay, you have to be careful. Uh, uh, for, uh, at such points. Now, you find also in our textbook another example where the second derivative is computed and discussed. Or should I spend time to go into details? Assume, assume you have given this, this curve, this parametric curve here given by these parametric equations. Uh, now, uh, what we want to figure out, okay, for which t is the curve concave upward, for which, is the, for which t is the cave concurve downward. Uh, now, in order to do this, you have first you have to look at the first derivative. Okay, so for the first derivative, uh, you just have to take the derivative of this one with respect to t. So what you have is two t plus three t square over, and then the derivative of, of x with respect to t. So what you have is two t. So what you get here is uh, uh, is is two plus three uh, t half. Now. Uh, for computing the second derivative, okay. So, the, so once more here. So here, the first derivative, okay, is uh, the first derivative of y over the first derivative of x. But the, first, the second derivative is not the second derivative of y over the second derivative of x. You have to use the same principle. So, you, what you have is d over dx of dy over dx. And now, what you have to do? So, you have to you have to take this one. You have to take the derivative uh, uh, with respect to t, which is uh, three half, and you have to, derivat to take the, derivat the derivative uh, of x with respect to t, which is four t. Okay, so this is the second derivative, uh, and you see that. Uh, okay, so if t is 
smaller than zero, the second derivative will be negative. Uh, so here, concave downward. And if t is larger than zero, then concave upward. OK. And the, uh, so in order to use here calculus, you do not even have to know okay, how the f function here uh, looks like. Of course, this would be not enough information to understand how the function looks like. You, uh, you, you, you have to discuss uh, more properties in order to understand how this function looks like. But essentially, you can use such an approach in order to figure out how a parametric curve uh, uh, looks like. You first study, OK, where is the function increasing, decreasing, and so on. This might be helpful in order to discuss the function. Now, uh, so this is tangents. Uh, now, another issue which we have uh, discussed before are areas. OK, so if, if you have a function uh, which is larger or equal than 0, then the area is the integral, let's say, from a to b of f of x dx. And, uh, and uh, of course, we can develop a similar formula for a curve which is given by parametric equations. So x is equal to f of t, y is equal to g of t. Now, what you have to assume is that y is larger or equal than 0, so, or, or g of t is larger or equal than 0, that you have this assumption here. And uh, if the t is between alpha and beta, uh, what you need as well is that, uh, OK, so the curve should only be traversed once as you go from alpha to beta. So the, cu the curve is, the parametric curve is traversed exactly once as, as t goes from alpha to beta. Now, uh, since you can write this formula as the integral from a to b, y dx, you see, you might already guess, OK, the, for the y, you have g of t. And for dx, you just have the derivative of f of t times d of t. And if you write it like this, then you uh, uh, do not have to go first to the uh, explicit solution. So you do not have to eliminate the parameter before you uh, can use the formula. So the integral from alpha to beta, and now for y, you have uh, g of t. So you just interpret this formula in terms of the parametric equation. So this should give you the area. But you have to be careful, because uh, uh, the direction could be here different. So maybe uh, 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 for t is equal to alpha, OK, uh, if you look at the x, maybe you are at the right endpoint. And for t is equal to beta, you move to the left endpoint. Okay, in this case, uh, what you get here is something which is negative. Okay, so then you have to reverse it. So you have to be careful. If, uh, so it could, it could be this, or it could be this here. Depends on your situation. Okay, as t is going from alpha to beta, maybe uh, your uh, y is uh, your x uh, will move from the right to the left then what you get is something negative here. But the area should be positive. Uh, OK, so normally, uh, you can just do computations. If at the end you get a result which is negative, you just change, you just change the original uh, uh, order of upper and lower limit. Now, uh, OK, so may maybe let's look at an example. And, and the advantage, once more, is uh, you do not have to go through the details here, OK? So once you have given a parametric equation, you just use this formula here now in order to find the area below the function and above the x-axis. Uh, for instance, uh, let's, look at, uh, let's look at the ellipse. OK, so we have x squared over a squared plus uh, y squared over b squared is equal to uh, 1. So what we want to do is we want to compute the area below the ellipse.
OK. Uh, uh, but actually, this is not given in parametric equation here. But uh, we can easily find the parametric equations by, for instance, this would be, would be a possible choice of parametric equations. OK, so this actually is a parametrization of the ellipse. Uh, now, uh, our t is from 0 to, for the whole ellipse, from 0 to 2 pi. But what we, wanna com what we compute is just the area below the upper uh, semi-ellipse. So let's say t is from 0 to pi. This obviously gives you a parametrization of the ellipse. You just plug it in here. You see it's really equal to 1. Uh, now, uh, so uh, uh, if you have... If you have written in this, if you have written the problem in this form, you just apply, the, you just plug it into the formula. So the area will be okay. You integrate over the range of the parameter from zero to pi. You have uh, p times sine of t, and uh, uh, here you have a times uh, minus sine of t dt. You see, this is here. This is here an example, okay? Because you see that. Uh, uh, this would be minus AB integral from 0 to pi uh, sine square of t dt. Now, uh, we know that this integral, because uh, uh, if, you, if you take this integral and you add the same integral with the sine replaced by the cosine, you get, one, you get pi, and both of them have the same size, so this is pi half. Uh, so you will have that this is minus AB times pi half. Uh, but you see that the minus here is, uh, is not correct. Uh, the reason here is, is just what I said, because as uh, t is going from 0 to pi, we will move uh, along the upper semi-ellipse from this point to this point here. So in the wrong direction, okay, because the, for t is equal to 0, we are actually at the right, right end point. For t is equal to pi, we are at the left end point. Okay, so the uh, integration, we, we, we shouldn't use this formula, we have to use this one. We have to reverse it. So actually, here we have to use this formula. Of course, this could be figured out in, adva in, ad in advance by looking at, okay, uh, uh, how do we uh, traverse okay, the curve. Uh, but uh, uh, if the result is negative at the end, you just, you, you, you know that the mistake is here, so you have just to interchange uh, uh, upper and lower limits. Okay, so maybe let's uh, do a second example. So, but you see, in this case, we already computed the area of the ellipse also differently by not using uh, this parametric equation. Uh, this maybe might be slightly more more easier, uh, but there is no 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 huge difference uh, because for the Original one, actually, we also use trigonometric substitution. We will end up essentially with, with the same integral. You have to do some, some more computation. Uh, but so, so, so maybe this method is uh, kind of uh, uh, is quicker than the uh, method we have seen previously, where we just uh, solve here for, for, uh, for y and then use our original method. Uh, because then the integral is getting slightly more complicated. Uh, but doing one easy substitution, you will end up with the same integral. No huge difference. It will just simplify matters a little bit. Okay, so how about the cycloids? So let's compute uh, the area below one loop of the cycloid. Uh, so the cycloid is given by theta minus uh, sine of theta. And if we just consider one loop, then theta from 0 to uh, to pi. And now, actually, the, at t, theta is equal to 0. We are really at the left end point, And we move on to the right end point. So now we have to use this formula, not this, this one. Uh, OK. And the integral is the integral from uh, 0 to 2 pi. Uh, so we have to plug in the y. So we have r times 1 minus the cosine of theta uh, times, and the derivative here of the uh, uh, of f, uh, so what we have is r times 1 minus the cosine of theta, d theta. 
Okay, so what we get is that this is equal to r square, the integral from zero to uh, two pi, and uh, uh, we have one minus cosine of theta square, so we have one minus two times the cosine of theta plus the cosine square of theta d theta. Okay, so we see that uh, this will be equal to r square <coughs> times 2 pi minus uh, uh, twice uh, the integral from 0 to 2 pi cosine of theta. But this integral is equal to 0 uh, plus the integral from 0 to 2 pi cosine square of theta d theta. Now, this integral is equal to 2 pi. Uh, so this integral is equal to 0. And this integral here must be equal to uh, 2 pi. So what we get is 4 times pi times r square. OK, so this is for the uh, area. Now, uh, next time we will look at the uh, uh, arc lengths and the uh, surface area, which we can uh, uh, as well compute without first uh, uh, eliminating the parameter. Okay.